Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. In this series where we aim to take electronic circuit concepts and demonstrate them in a practical manner to make what seems as an abstract idea in the field of electrical and electronics engineering and make it more easy and tangible to understand. This video aims to look at inductors and their transient response in resistive and inductive circuits or RL circuits. Before we get on with the video, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so through subscribing and sharing this video with your friends. I've also recently joined Patreon where I share the notes behind these videos. So if you'd like to support, you can do so through the link in the description below. I'd also like to clarify that this video assumes that the viewer is familiar with inductors and the concepts of circuit connections such as series and parallel circuit connections. So if you'd like a refresher, you can check out the videos that are related to these topics in the playlist. Before we get on with the video, let's remember some terms first. What is steady state condition? A system, or in our case, a circuit, is in the steady state condition when the current at each point of the circuit is constant, meaning that it does not change with time. The transient response, however, is the circuit's or system's temporary response. It is followed by the steady state response, which is the behavior of the circuit after a long time uh, since an excitation has been applied to the circuit. Circuits are not always stable or in the steady state condition, but they can be subjected to sudden step changes in the form of changing voltage levels or input conditions. For example, when we open or close an input switch, or when the circuit receives fluctuations in voltage levels due to sensor data being transmitted. However, when a voltage or state change occurs, the circuit may not respond instantaneously to that change, but may take an amount of time, no matter how small, if a reactive component such as inductors or capacitors are present in, within the circuit. The change of state from one stable condition to another generally occurs at a rate determined by the time constant of the circuit, which itself will be an exponential value. So then you can think of the time constant of a circuit as the way that we can describe the transient response of the circuit's currents and voltages over a set period of time. Unlike purely resistive circuits, where the change in input is directly reflected to the output, changes in RL circuits need time to be reflected in the output. In this video, we will be seeing how abrupt change in input voltage produces a change to the output in a series RL circuit. Let's suppose that the inductor has no energy stored in it initially, and that at time equals zero, the switch is closed. As the switch closes, voltage will reach the inductor and will try to pass current abruptly through the inductor. But remember, according to Lenz's law, an induced current always flows in a direction that opposes the change that produced it. So at the beginning, there will be an opposition to this current that's trying to flow in, in the inductor. But gradually, current will increase until it reaches the final value of I equals V over R. And at the same time, the voltage across the inductor will decrease until it reaches zero. Time required for current to reach its full value is equivalent to about five time constants. Thus, the transient response of a series RL circuit is equivalent to five time constants. The time constant in an RL circuit is measured by L over R, where R is the resistance in ohms and L is the inductance in Henry, and the unit for the time constant is in seconds. As you can see, the greater the inductance, the greater the time constant is, which makes sense because the larger the inductor, the more it will oppose that sudden change in current by producing current in the opposite direction to oppose that change. And the smaller the resistance R, 
the greater the current that is reaching the inductor at its beginning stage stages of charging. Therefore, because of this larger current, there would be, according to Lenz's law, a larger amount of current that is produced in the opposite direction to oppose that change. But how can we mathematically describe this behavior and change of current? We can apply Kirchhoff's voltage law onto the loop, where KBL will yield the following equation V naught, which is the supply voltage, in equals I into R and L into dI by dt. By solving this differential equation, we get the following equation to describe the behavior of current in a charging series RL circuit, where I is equal to V over R into 1 minus E to the power of minus T over tau, where T is the time and tau is the time constant L over R. Now let's look at a discharging RL circuit. When the switch is opened and the battery is cut off the circuit, the current drops because of energy dissipation by the resistor. But this is also not instantaneous since the inductor, according to Lenz's law, will also oppose the change of the decrease in current. Similarly, the voltage in a discharging circuit will continue to discharge until it reaches zero. The time it takes for an inductor to fully discharge is about five time constants. We can also describe the behavior of current in a discharging circuit as follows. First, we can apply a KVL onto the loop where we will be getting minus I into R, R1, minus L or L1 into dI by dt equals zero. Through solving this differential equation, we get the following equation. I, the current of a discharging inductor, is equal to I naught, which is the fully charged current value for the inductor, into E to the power of minus T over tau, where tau is L over R. I naught can be calculated by taking the voltage of the supply voltage that has been now removed from the circuit over the resistance. Thank you for watching this video and if you found it useful consider subscribing to my channel or if you'd like to support me you can do so through Patreon which you can find in the description below. Stay tuned for the next video and as always thank you for watching.